Welcome everyone to the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast. I'm your hostess, Monique Ramsey. And today on the podcast, I have a guest. Her name is Kaylee. She's a patient of Dr. Brahmi, and we're so honored that she's willing to share her story and tell others about what she did and why. And so welcome, Kaylee. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I am a hairstylist here in San Diego. I'm 37. I've always wanted to do a cosmetic procedure to sculpt my body. And so just about three months ago, I finally did it at La Jolla Cosmetic Surgery Center. And my experience has been absolutely wonderful. So I just wanted to share it. I also did a lot of research on social media to prepare for my recovery. And I found that there wasn't a lot of info out there. So I started my own social media page to kind of help others who look like me my before kind of have an idea of what your after will look like. So it's been a really fun experience. I, I don't know if that, it, I'm sure that's not the same for everybody, but I've just been very blessed and I've had just like nothing but a great time healing and watching my body change. Well, and I love, I love the fact that, and, and for everybody in the audience, go to TikTok or Instagram. She's the skinny BBL, the skinny BBL. Mm-hmm. And I love how open and and your first post, you're like six hours post-op or some crazy (laughs) thing. And you're like, it was so cute. And I'm thinking, I would not be that bubbly. You would be (laughs) if you saw what happened to your body while you were asleep. I went to sleep (laughs) with my old body and I woke up with hips. I've always wanted hips. So it was like... Um, like a miracle, you know? (laughs) Well, and you, on the one where you showed kind of your before... And you had your white coat on Always with covered. the peach kind of, and you were talking about the fact that, you know, you carry your weight more up. You did mm-hmm. you <laughs> up do. and you wanted to try to, you know, create that hourglass shape with clothing. Yes. And you took off your coat and you showed your back and you were right. You said, I'm, I'm like straight back. There was like nothing straight. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. yeah. And-, and then later, I mean, tell us about you know, when you first saw your new shape. Yeah. So I woke up from anesthesia. My advice would to be to go under anesthesia if you're going to do anything like this. Cause I actually, oh, sure. I actually researched some places that don't offer anesthesia and you would do the whole thing awake. I'm just so glad I went to sleep. I was talking about my childhood to some guy and <laughs> woke up and I, <laughs> my body was 100% different. As soon as I got home, I could see my stomach was more snatched my upper body was more slim and I had, you know, I was very swollen. So I had hips, hips. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I don't even care if the swelling never goes down. I'm so happy just right now already, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you, so you decided to document the process and tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about why you decided to document yeah. the journey in the way that you did. The, the reason it's called the skinny BBL and I get a lot of, of scruff on that. I do have some TikTok haters already, but people are like, you were not skinny before. That's not a skinny BBL. Just kind of mean, but I've always been on the petite side and I think your BMI has to be below, be below like a 28 to be considered a skinny BBL. I also just liked the name. I thought it had a nice ring to it. Yeah. But I was looking online and just a lot of the BBL before and afters, they're a huge, not natural end result. And so a skinny BBL, you can't really go unnatural because you don't have a ton of fat to work with. So you just kind of are going to get a more natural result, which I feel like my results look insanely natural. I don't think anyone would ever know I've had work done at all. Um, which was the goal and the conversation I had with Dr. Brahmi. Like, please, I want to look normal. <laughs> it is so important yeah, I look and normal. So, <laughs> so the parts that were really bothering you, like mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about, you know, the areas that bothered you. Did you have trouble with finding kind of cer- certain kinds of clothes or yeah. kind of describe what that's You know, like. in fact, I don't, I thought I would have a lot more before footage on my phone to be able to post like, look at me now for my TikToks and stuff, but I was so covered up. I just would have never worn it, you know? Oh, I you see. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, you were, you were camouflaging. I was so aware, hyper aware of the parts of my body that were not what would be considered to the masses as beautiful, which is essentially the opposite of a woman's body. You can be bottom heavy, you can be curvy, you could be all the things, but top heavy like a man is the one thing you cannot be. It's the one thing clothes are not made for, except for blazers, which I lived in, and it gets hot. 
It gets hot in those. And so my conversation with Dr. Brahmi actually did not start with a BBL. It started with just liposuction. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can go in and I can take care of all that upper body weight. But at the end of the day, you're still not going to have curves. You still won't have an hourglass. So you could be, you know, you're going under the, you're going under anesthesia. You're doing all this for what? So like you can come out and still not love your body. If you want curves, then let's do it. Let's go all the way. Let's Mm -hmm. do a BBL, you know, fat transfer. And I still was like, here are my hangups. And one of them was the danger, the risk. Mm -hmm. But, Mm -hmm. you know, he told me like, not all BBLs are the same. Like you can transfer the fat anywhere. I needed it on my upper outer area, which is lower risk, actually. I didn't need it. So upper outer, sort of the upper part of the buttock and the hips mm -hmm. or what? Yeah, I had like a cute little round butt on the bottom of it. But I just didn't have, Uh you know, the shape from the back, you know, Ah. from the side, like straight on. I didn't have anything that went out. And so he said, like, one, your recovery will be easier because you'll be able to sit right away and sleep on your back. Mm. And then two, there's not any major, major veins, arteries where we're going to be putting the fat. And he's like, obviously, I will be careful no matter what. But it would be a lower risk than a true BBL. So... After that, I was sold. And we did an episode, and we'll put it in the show notes. We did an episode talking about the, you know, what are the dangers of BBL? Why, what you have to look for as a consumer? And it sounds like you did that research. And I yeah. love the fact that, you know, you picked a place where you've got a board certified plastic surgeon. Mm-hmm. You've got, you know, and they have a whole list, and I can't remember of rules, sort of about where's the safest place to re to put that mm-hmm. fat because it can be dangerous can be, yeah. in the wrong hands. Um, and especially if they try to push the envelope too much mm-hmm. and, you know, that isn't, and I, you know, sometimes that's when it, people go out of the country and then they have complications. Um, but the board certified plastic surgeons here, you know, have rules. a whole, have, they have rules. And then also having that, the anesthesia under um, general, because really under local is not safe. No. You know, it's really not the safest way and it can be done, mm-hmm. but is that how it should be done? And you don't want to go into a procedure, which is like mm-hmm. you, you looked up, you know, your, you did your research. You don't want to go into procedure that's putting you at a big risk exactly. over something like that. So what other things did you do like workout yeah. wise to try to change your body shape before deciding to have surgery? I mean, I had decided like, if I'm doing this, I want to spend a year really trying to focus on before I go under the knife, like that's so serious. It's so serious. And I, and I wanted to do what I could to my body prior to doing that and having that be a, it it truly was my last resort. Although I wish now hindsight, it would have been my first resort. I just, honestly, the gym's never going to get you, give you hips. It's just not, it's literally not possible. Right. So the women in my family have very large on both sides. All the women in my family, very large upper bodies, very small lower bodies. We're all top heavy. And even my before photos, which the internet has called me fat, I was doing everything, everything. And to see like what my, the women in my family actually look like, you would all think, wow, she's very petite compared to everybody else because I was doing the gym. I was eating clean. I was working out. I, but I'm like, I'm also not a gym girly. I'm, I like to be in the gym for an hour, but I can't live there. I am a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. I stand all day long. Yeah. You know, I can't. And I didn't want to be much smaller. It's hard to explain, but like I'm three months post-op. I'm in the gym in a healthy way. I'm eat in a reasonable way. I still enjoy my life very much. I weigh the exact same that I went in before surgery. My body likes to be at 150. It loves it. And I haven't changed my weight. I've just mm-hmm. redistributed it. So like in order to get where I wanted on my upper body, I would have had to lose all the weight from my lower body first. Like, I would have to be 120 pounds. And that is not sustainable for me. I am happy. My body mm-hmm. is happy at 150, but now the 150 is just prettier. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is better. So yeah. Yes. And so was there like a moment that pushed you over the edge where like, I'm doing this right now? What was that moment? Oh gosh, I remember. Okay, so first of all, I had looked into this place already. So I was on your email list and your text list, but I had not come in for a consult. Cinco de Mayo, I got a text message from La Jolla Cosmetics Surgery Center saying, hey, if you book your liposuction appointment before the end of May, you will get like a ton of money off. And I love a deal. That was my, that was my text. You're welcome. You got me. 
<laughs> you so got funny. me. And so I booked my, that was a, Cinco de Mayo was a Friday. I booked, I called that Friday. I said, I'm interested in booking a consult for liposuction. Do you have a preference on doctors? I said, no, I just like, I've heard this place is really good. Give me who you think will be really good at liposuction. They gave me to Dr. Brahmi. I come in Tuesday. We have the discussion about doing the BBL. Um, and I was sold by him. Originally, he also said that he would put all of my incisions inside my tattoos. So I don't have, really have any visible incisions or scarring at all. And that that kind of was like, okay, this guy is smart. Oh, great. <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about, you know. And I have enough tattoos that I was able to do it. I only have four visible, visible incisions. Thursday, so I leave here Tuesday, and I'm like, I'm in talks with you guys, email correspondence. I say in my head, if this is meant to be, I looked at my work schedule because I'm a hairstylist. I don't get paid time off, right? I'm like, if this is meant to be, he's going to have an opening on May 26th because the following, it was the furthest out in May we could go and still get the discount, right? And the following week, I didn't have enough, uh, very many clients scheduled. I could, I could, yes. I said, so the universe, like, speak to me, you know, around and- uh, if he's available on the 26th, we're doing it, right? <laughs> and then- he was, but then I still had cold feet and I had a client come in and she was talking to me. I was talking to her about it. She's like, I'm getting a nose job. And I was like, what? And she has like the cutest nose ever. But I, I also understand wanting to change, you know, and I thought she's perfect just the way she is. But she's like, Kaylee, I think about it every day, all day. I, I, I never stop. It, every time I look in the mirror, I see it. I notice it. I want to change it. I just need to do it so I can just stop thinking about it. And I was like, that's how I feel. She's like, so I finally booked it. She said, mm-hmm. I've done what you've been doing because I've been shopping around for like three years. She's like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Are you going to come out worse than you were? No. And she left that day. I had a 20 minute gap. I called you guys. I put my credit card on file. I booked it. I texted her. I said, I'm doing it. And then she got her surgery two weeks after me. We oh just, my gosh. I'll, I'll cry about it. We just had our first appointments again with each other with her new nose and my new curves. <laughs> and we literally just embraced each other. We're like, we're so happy oh. we did this. So. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. And I love, I'm, I love that, you know, you were able to say, okay, I'm ready to go. Cause you did your research and you'd been thinking about it and you didn't mm-hmm. just like, you know, I think some people, you know, the public sometimes thinks that, you know, people rush into things and they don't, they don't, you know, some people, Mm -mm. it just takes one thing, whatever that thing is to go, okay, let's do it. And, you know, what really sealed the deal for me was being able to sit and lay down. Um, The post-op recovery, sleeping on your stomach Mm -hmm. really sounded awful to me. And I'm like, I don't think I can continue to work my job and, and be a good human if I'm not getting rest. So when, when Dr. Brahmi reassured me that I'd be able to sleep on my back and that I would be able to sit certain ways post-op, I was like, I don't have any more excuses left. That was my only excuse. Yeah. And do you remember how you originally heard about La Jolla Cosmetic? My best friend, Fatima. She gets, she gets stuff done in the med spa here. Oh, awesome. Okay. And I think that I love the fact that, you know, it's a lot of times mm-hmm. you can do all the research in the world, but having a real person who has been there in some way, shape or form is always, it's always nice. I mean, I've done a few consults in other places, probably five total. And this was the place I booked, right? So it had a lot to do with how I was treated. And uh, Dr. brought me. I, I liked his personality. He didn't seem to be like a know-it-all, but he, I liked that he was older and experienced. Um, and he just kept reassur- like saying, like, we'll give you a really nat. I think you'll really like how natural it looks. And we're just going to do some sculpting. He didn't want to like mark me all up and change everything. You know, <laughs> he was like, I felt very at ease. And I did a video about it. I was not anxious at the consultation, at you mean, or before. prior to? No, like the morning of the night before full, like I just felt at like total peace about it. So it was, I felt really like I was in did, really good hands, you know? So is, is terms of like any worries before surgery, did you really have any, or did you kind of feel like you had solved all that prior to going into the OR? No, I just was at peace about it. I think it's because I just knew I wanted it. I knew I, I knew I was going to like the results and I just felt calm. I, I, it was weird. Honestly, because you would think you would be nervous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever? And it was had also any... the 
Oh. Yeah, it was the first time I'd ever gone under anesthesia as well. That's what I was just going to ask. Have you ever had mm -hmm. any surgery before? Because mm -hmm. that sometimes is like, you don't know what to expect. So, right. Um, so do you remember at all that morning, like what, what you did or did, like to kind of prep yourself going into the OR? Yeah. I mean, so I had to shower the night before, shower the morning before with these special sponges that they give you. Um, I couldn't drink after 12 a.m. that night, except for to brush my teeth the next morning. And I think I took a gabapentin, which they prescribed to me for right before I left the house. But even before I was calm, because gabapentin is supposed to kind of relax you, I was good. I got there and I was just like, I'm ready, man. I was a little bit like, I would say, not paying attention to anything else. My friend drove me and we realized that that she couldn't get back into my house because I had the keys in my purse. So she had to come back. But the girls up front were really helpful. I could hear them like talking about the surgery before I like when I was in the waiting room. Didn't make me nervous. Even that didn't make me nervous. And then the anesthesiologist came in and I went and laid down on the bed and woke up and I had a brand new body. <laughs> talking about yeah. your childhood. <laughs> yeah. So, and do you remember being in recovery? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I filmed a lot of videos yeah. when I was post-op. I, I was restless, surprisingly. Um, I woke mm. up from anesthesia with a lot of energy. I think maybe I'm not a good sleeper because that might've just been the deepest sleep I'd had in a while, but I was like ready to run a race. <laughs> um, so I filmed a good amount of content just talking about, I was in zero pain. Um, I, I, my ex-boyfriend had gotten knee surgery last year and the doctor was like, stay ahead of the pain. And I remember him saying that. Exactly. So I did for 48 hours. I took Percocets every four to six hours. I woke up in the middle of the night to take it, like whatever I needed to do. And, yeah, yeah. um, for 48 hours. So from Friday morning to Sunday morning, I took the Percocet and then I didn't need any after that. And then I just switched to Tylenol. Yeah. Uh, but I never once felt a ache or a pain of any kind. Well, and I think that's the key mm -hmm. is that staying ahead of the pain. Because once you don't, you think, oh, I'm fine. You're and not. you get behind. Mm -hmm. it, it's so hard to get back to a place of equilibrium where yeah. you feel okay. And so that's a great advice. Mm -hmm. um, so immediately you know, post-op did like, how long did it take for you to kind of feel back to normal, so to speak? Or, and when did you go back to work? I would say it took me three or four days to feel like good to like leave the house and stuff in small increments. Um, I got a little rest. That's how I'm blonde. Uh, I got bored in the house and <laughs> decided I'm just going to bleach my own hair since I can't be at work. Um, I was, I did my best friend's hair at home like a week later and I was like I could totally be at work right now but I did take 10 full days off so Friday the day of surgery 10 full days and went back to work two Tuesdays later um uh -huh. taking less clients at first just to make sure I was good because I did do the upper the arms oh yeah okay. I did yeah. full to give you an I did full 360 lipo plus arms with a fat transfer to mostly my hip dips so that was like my okay. procedure. And so I wasn't sure how I was going to hold up all day blow drying, but it was totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with your arms. And so when you were talking about your faha, so tell, explain what that is for the audience. Yeah. Cause that's sort of a newer term. Like they used to just call it your compression garment, mm -hmm. <laughs> but now it's a faha. Um, so tell us about what you wore mm -hmm. in that first couple of weeks. So for the first, uh, like seven days, I wore the compression garments that, that I received from you guys. Um, and then after seven days, the swelling had gone down and they weren't tight enough, which is oh amazing. Because <laughs> that means <laughs> I was getting skinnier and skinnier. Um, I, I was cleared to go to my masseuse after my post-op, which was four days later. So I went to her on the fifth day. And she said, on the 10th day, I can get into like a stage two... Faha. So the Faha is more like a new thing, I think, in the last 20 years. Like lipo has always been able to suck the fat out, but the Faha is about shaping the body so okay. that once your fat is gone, like what do you want your body to look like? So the Fahas have more contour, more of a okay. snatched waist than just a regular compression garment. They're really going to snatch you. It's really imperative to wear them, like imperative. My masseuse explains it like this. 
your body wants to go back to homeostasis. So my body really wanted to put the weight back on in my stomach and and where my new waist had been created above my hips. Um, that's where I held a lot of weight is like right above my hips, like, you know, the tire situation. Oh, uh-huh, So she's uh-huh. like, if you don't wear a compression garment, your body, the fat's gone, but your body will actually try to get back to its old state by putting scar tissue there. Oh, so the compression okay. says, hey, 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 body, no <laughs> space here. There's no space uh-huh. here for that. So it's insanely important to wear the Faha and to get one that has... Like my stage two was like aggressively snatched. It looked, I looked like a bug. (laughs) I look like how Cardi B looks, but it is to like, really like say, Hey body, do not go out at the waist, stay in, stay in. And, And it worked, you know, and now I'm three months, a little over three months. I wear my Faha to work and to sleep, but all of my lounging. So like weekends, I don't wear it unless I'm sleeping, work and sleep. So I'm probably... In it, maybe 70, eh, 75%, maybe less actually, 50%. Where do you stop with the Vaha? Like at what point or when? Not where. I don't know. You just <laughs> when feel, do you? It's so crazy because you think it's going to be the most uncomfortable thing ever, but it actually is. It makes you feel like really like you're still doing something to make sure that your surgery was worth it, you know? And I want to do that as long as I can. I'm probably looking at six months to a year of trying to at least wear it at work. That's eight hours a day. And um, on the days I don't wear it to work, try to wear it to sleep, like on the weekends. So um, a lot of like the South American women that get those amazing results, the Brazilians, the Colombians, they wear them constantly. I love that, you know, lipo has been around since I think the early 80s, but, you know, that the techniques have improved. Mm-hmm. The cannulas are small. Like there's all this technology that has improved. The techniques the surgeons use have improved. And I love that the post-op, there's like a whole post-op, you know, there really industry is. almost. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about chairs and p- cushions mm-hmm. and all these different things. But, you know, I, I love that it's kind of, because in the past, you know, there was nothing. It was either this boring little garment that went that you got with your surgery. Mm -hmm. And then how do you transition back into life? Because you do still feel like, you know, like you said, you know, if you don't wear it, then your body might add swelling there Mm -hmm. and then you're not feeling well. And so having the, the, the right garments after, and then you mentioned Amy. So tell us about your lymphatic massage specialist, how you found her Uh, and kind of some of the things that she helped you through and the advice postoperatively. So one of my clients actually did a BBL last year and she had the same issue as me with the top heaviness and she's Middle Eastern and a lot of, you know, very Kardashian looking everywhere else, but very top heavy. And so she, she is like a type A researcher. I'm like a call one place and hope for the best. So she did a lot of the research for me and she actually told me too about La Jolla Cosmetic, but um, she found a a great masseuse for her post-op. And so when I decided to do this, I reached out to her, who did you go to? And she's like, you got to go to my girl, Amy. The thing with like doctors is like, they aren't you know, he doesn't see me every week. So he's not able to see and make suggestions to me. Like you need to tighten your faha or you need to do this. But like, if you don't, if you can't see your doctor every week, which how could you, right? Then who do you go to, to know if you're on the right track in your recovery or what you could be changing. And so a post-op recovery specialist like masseuse is, I think, has been pivotal to my recovery. Um, Amy Beltrain, I think is that I, um, her Instagram and her TikTok is SD curve server and she does lymphatic drainage, um, and massage, but she also like, I mean, even if she just literally had me in her room for an hour and just talked to me, (laughs) (laughs) it was so nice to have someone go, no, this is normal. No, no, no. You're all good. You're all good. And she's been such a huge support, um, for the first two months, I, I haven't seen, I actually go for a massage today. I haven't seen her in about a month and yeah, I know I'm so excited, (laughs) but she just knows her stuff, man. She knows her stuff. And 
So she was the one who was like, I've never seen a recovery like this. Like, this is 100%. Your doctor is really good. Kaylee, you picked a really good one. And she also said it had a lot to do with how healthy I was going into the surgery, how much I worked out. Um, she said, because my body knows how to recover from exercise, it knew how to recover from this trauma. Because it is a trauma. It's mm -hmm. a serious surgery, yeah. you know? Yeah. And right. she's been with me every step of the way. Now, did you set that up prior to surgery or did you do it after and then start making appointments? I set it up prior. I had my first three appointments with her already set up, like already in the system. I paid her in bulk. I paid her for, she was running a deal for like 10 massages for under $1,000. And I was like, take my money. <laughs> exactly. Oh, how and great. And then like after the first one, I was like, don't charge me, but you don't charge enough, but not me, but you've got to start charging more. <laughs> yeah. After, <laughs> after my- <laughs> Because after. when she saw my body, she was like, Kaylee, I was like, it's good, right? She's like, oh my gosh, you know? So she's just been wonderful and made me feel so like, she kept being like, just wait till you see yourself in a month. Just wait until two months. Like you're going to change so exciting. It's amazing. And I think you're right. You, you know, you went home and you were like, oh my God, I look so good. And that was on the day of surgery. It does get so much better. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I think, you know, people say TTP, trust the process. Mm -hmm. You really do need to trust the process because it does take time and your body, you know, like you said, it's a trauma and your body has to heal yeah. it the way it does. And everybody heals differently. Some people slower, some people quicker, some people who heal quicker, then they make the mistake of doing too much, too fast. Yeah. And I love the fact that as you return to work, mm -hmm. you sort of eased in, you know, eased into it so that you weren't overdoing it mm -hmm. and setting yourself backwards. One thing, so you were talking about lipo in your arms. Mm -hmm. Did you have to wear something that was like a compression garment for your arms also? Oh yeah. I bought like 10 okay. of them because the, I, your girl's not doing laundry every day. No. <laughs> Uh, so if anybody needs some, hit me up on TikTok. I will donate right. them. We'll start, a, we'll start a little marketplace. I have an entire drawer of shapewear now, you know? I bet. But yeah, so I wore full, like I wore one Faja. My favorite brand of Faja for post-op was called Snatched Body. They're about $160. They're Colombian. Snatched Body, you can buy them on Amazon. They have the bra and everything included. So you really like just put that on and that's it. Oh, nice. I bought a large and a medium. So I would wear the medium during the day when I could handle some more compression, the large at night so that I was more comfortable. Uh, the, oh. the last thing you want to do is be unable to breathe. That's not the goal. <laughs> you want to breathe. And then I, on top of that, was also wearing one that goes down here until my fourth week post-op when my doctor cleared me to start gymming again and to, I could take off the arm faha. So. Okay. And I wore that pretty religiously too. I just bought some long sleeve shirts. It was middle of summer. You you know, you just figure it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 And actually you did it at a good time because now it's starting to heat up. Yeah. Actually, you know, yeah. we're finally at the point where our summer isn't doom and gloom and <laughs> you know, it's it's actually sunny. I just bought a couple of Fajas that are racer back, you know? Because oh. a lot of them they have the strap that likes to go right here. You know, right. when and you work it's in the way. Yeah. It's and so it's so cups. comfortable at work. Um, it's from a brand called Shape She. So there's so many options for Fajas. Like I just like spend the money and like get a few, like just get a yeah. few. Well, getting good ones too, because mm -hmm. you do want to be comfortable and you are going to be wearing it. Like you say, you're going to be wearing it maybe six months, a year. You're going to, you know, to keep that new shape. Mm -hmm. And and I love that you're you're kind of in the mindset of, if I'm going to do this investment, then I'm going to do this investment, Absolutely. you know, kind of top to bottom. And even though, you know, you said all the working out for a year, you were like, oh, I should have just done this, but mm -hmm. you put yourself, like you mentioned in a much healthier place yeah. to recover and bounce back quicker. Yeah. And I think that's such an important thing. And I think you and I, before we started recording, you were talking about diet and was it Amy who helped you with kind of like what to eat, what not to eat yeah. around the the post op you see everything on tiktok it's like feed the fat feed the fat which is true and and i made it out of i feel like i was able to retain a lot of the fat in my hips like i still have some really amazing curves and um i think the more i'm gymming and eating clean like the tighter and smaller my stomach will get as well so that i'll really have the curves um but she's 
she was like high protein, high fat diet, you know, low sugar, still carbs are okay, but like healthy carbs, sweet potato, brown rice, all of that. And I wasn't really a dairy eater prior to surgery. I tried to stay away from it because I felt like it would make me bloat. But I started eating more dairy, like cottage cheese, because I, I needed like something that was high in protein and high in fat. And, and my hormone levels are better. Oh, really? Since surgery. Yeah. I just had mm-hmm. blood work done and my vitamin D, oh my, my vitamin D, I was, I didn't know, but I was low in vitamin D. And Almost so everybody is. Yeah. yeah. And so now I'm, I'm back on track. So that's really cool too. Oh, good. Yeah. oh that's awesome. I love yeah. that. And I love that, you know, you have the mindset of that healthy living in general. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just about this one thing to oh. look better. It's to look better, feel better and glowing, you know, for, because you're doing the right things yeah. for your body. So when you were talking about Amy you were saying, you know, she can read the body. What does she mean by that? So like be after lipo. So essentially the process of lipo, as she's explained to me and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but essentially they put a liquid into your body that kind of disintegrates the fat so that it can be sucked out. And so after the fat's been sucked out, like your muscles have to reattach to your skin. Also why the compression is important. And certain places, if there's liquid or if something happens, like the skin doesn't reattach to the muscle as well. And you'll kind of get like lumps in the skin almost. Mm -hmm. And so she can keep an eye on areas that don't look like they're doing as well, massage it out. Like, but she can literally tell with a naked, like, she'll be like, do you see that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> that looks like my skin. I don't know what you're talking about, but she's like, yeah, no. It, I, and she'll use all these special tools. And she had a very gentle hand. I was expecting a lot of pain. The internet is, you know, I loved TikTok because of all the firsthand um, knowledge. Everyone's recovery is very different. I would say I would be like, a poster child for an insanely simple and easy and a breeze of a recovery. All of my clients are super surprised too. I don't know why. I always have felt like I've handled pain well, but she started to use like tools on me and stuff maybe about two months in like wooden tools. And that's to like cause blood flow and everything to the areas. So I don't know all the science behind it. I don't want to say (laughs) anything wrong, but she is amazing. (laughs) Kind of looking back, like if you were to say, what are the top three things that you did in that, in that first month, Post you know, recovery, what would they be? Rest. My doctor uh, prescribes me sleep meds. So I actually had an appointment, my PCP, I actually had an appointment with him prior to my surgery, um, just to make sure that everything, like, I just wanted to tell him about it essentially and make sure that I would be able to take my sleep medication, uh, with the anesthesia, like the night of, you know, that later that night and that everything was going to be okay with that. Um, and so I'm prescribed hundred milligrams of what I take. I usually only take 50 cause I don't need that much, but I did, I was taking a hundred. I was taking my prescribed amount, sleeping like a baby. Cause when you're healing sleep, yeah, rest, yeah. And so staying horizontal, even though I'm such a busy body, but the first two weeks, like really just not overdoing it and taking it easy water. And I really like did not drink alcohol the first couple of months. I just started reintroducing alcohol as like a, you know, social thing, but I really was eating clean, drinking water, resting and not drinking alcohol. And seeing Amy. And seeing Amy. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, well, like shopping, <laughs> I got to say, it was like shopping is my vice, right? I don't have, really have any other ones, but just you being- You and I would be dangerous oh my together, gosh. <laughs> Just being able to go, that's going to look good. That's going to look good. Yeah. That's well, going to look good yeah. on me. Yeah, how exciting is that? It's, you like, so did you have, because you Monique, were talking about- I never your... wanted to get married because of my body type. I never wanted a wedding. I will cry oh talking gosh. about it, but like, no, oh. dresses don't look good on me. Not top heavy like that. My legs are insane. They're gorgeous. I'm so, I love my legs. Covered up in every dress I wear. The the With the biggest part of me accented in every dress I wear forever. That's all it's always been. So like, I never even wanted- to get married. I never said yes to being in people's weddings as a bridesmaid. I hate wearing a gown. The thought of wearing a gown. 
gives me extreme because I can't show the best feature on my body, which is my legs, you know. Uh And so I'm in a wedding in October and it's hard to pick a dress. I'm having a hard time picking my favorite. (laughs) There's so many great ones. It looks so so good. (laughs) It's so cool. It is so cool. Being in a bikini is totally different. Just putting on anything that I want to wear and knowing that it's going to look good. It used to be like I would try on a lot of things every morning to find something that looked okay. And now I try on too many things because everything looks so good. And I'm like, oh, well, I haven't worn that yet, you know. So I feel like I've spent more money on my new closet. <laughs> but that's okay. The I mean, how exciting. Because <laughs> yeah. you're in a, because you, you're describing something that I think a lot of us feel yeah. about other, whatever parts of our body or face, mm-hmm. that there's something sometimes that nobody would know it, but that holds you back. Mm-hmm. And so you're talking about, you know, not participating in weddings or thinking maybe I'll never get married because I don't <laughs> literally <laughs> never, ever you fantasized know, about getting married because of the, the gown situation. I just never wanted all of that. Describe that sort of mental release. Like once it's solved, oh, like, like I don't how worry much brain about, space is opened up for, you know, for other things. I specialize in a treatment at my salon. So I, I specialize in keratin treatments. I work in an indoor outdoor salon. I work in the heat every single day. Every single summer, especially this time of year, it's pretty miserable. And going into yet another summer where I'm going to have to somehow find a way to cover up my upper body but stay cool. I have a lot of, like, oversized linen shirts in my closet still, like, just nice white oversized linen shirts that were breezy because that was, like, a way that I found to, like, cover up. But then, you know, I just look like a muumuu, you know? And so... (laughs) That was another thing, like a way for me to show my body and my features. I used to wear a lot of like short, short, short shorts. And as I've aged- you have great legs. Yes. And (laughs) and it's the only thing that makes me feel pretty to show off. And so as I've aged, I'm like, I can't still be going to nice dinners in La Jolla. My salon's in La Jolla now, and I'm trying to elevate my entire look. And I can't show off the one thing that's pretty. And so if I have to cover that up too, just because I'm aging and I think it's more appropriate to less is more. And then I also have to wear something baggy on the top. Now I'm just (laughs) covered in baggy clothes. I'm not living like this. I don't want to live like this. Even if my lower belly were to come back, I wouldn't really care because I I wear mostly like high-waisted pants, crop tops, you know, or tight top now that's tucked in, no back and bra fat, no armpit fat. I just, I just look smooth, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I feel so much better. I, I film content for my salon as well, not just for like my skinny BBL page, but like I get filmed from behind all the time. And it's just so nice to just have that peace of mind that all the footage I'm going to be able to use. Cause I'm not going to like look back at photos and go, Oh my God, <laughs> like how, how did you not see that when you were taking my photo, you know? Uh-huh, and we do uh-huh. focus on things that we're insecure about. Right but I don't have anything to focus on now. Like there's nothing left. How fun is that? How fun is that? <laughs> it's dangerous is what it well, is. Well, <laughs> just because you go shopping. I, I totally get it. I know exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. That's too cute. So do a little rollback for us. So push back a little bit so we can see that cute waist. Look at you. I know. Oh my gosh. <gasps> and then from oh my side, gosh. it still looks very, very natural. I am wearing the Faja today. Yeah. This could actually be a little, yes. this dress is actually a little large Okay, uh, because I bought it kind of earlier on in my yeah. procedure. But yeah, honestly, Moni, I haven't been super gymming this summer. I've been a little lazy uh, because I just, it, it's like, I just look so good. So I'm like, oh, I'll go tomorrow, you know, <laughs> but, but I will say that, that I, even with like having relaxed on that, I'm definitely still keeping my diet right, you know, Mm -hmm. but I mean, I haven't really, I haven't seen any like negative, negative. I haven't had a single negative thing happen. I do swell up a little bit when I take my Faha off for an extended period of time, which is normal, but there hasn't been a downside yet. Like I'm still waiting. Like when... (laughs) It's, you know, but it's yeah. just- Yeah, where is that? The, when they, waiting for this last shoe to drop or whatever no, they say. There's just like, nothing. Like just everything's been easy. Everything's been a breeze. I have and, no shame that I did what I did. You know, I put it all over the internet because I'm like, you know what? I hope this helps somebody else because I feel so good. It would be hard to feel ashamed about it. I feel so yeah. happy 
with my results, happy with the change I made to feel more confident. I mean, I can't imagine like being ashamed of it. You know, I will Mm -hmm. tell it to everybody like, oh, I've had work done. I mean, my extension, my hair looks amazing. It's extensions. It does. It is. (laughs) Yeah, it's not real. You know, 1010 recommend Dr. Brahmi. And go to well, follow I my page he's... if you if you want some advice <laughs> yeah. after. I actually no, need I to film a great. I need to film a TikTok today because I I did do this really creative thing that I think has really helped, and I bought a queen size memory foam, three inch, cut it in half so it's like the size of two twins, cut a hole out of it where my butt goes, and I sleep <laughs> on that every night still. So like I sleep in like this cloud of of memory foam with a, like a donut oh hole. And so oh, I love it, it hasn't put any pressure or tension because you don't want, the whole goal is that you don't put any pressure or tension on the where the fat is trying to survive. And mm. so that's why they want you sleeping on your stomach. Well, I told Dr. Brahmi about my little contraption. He's like, I think that's going to work great. So I think I need to tell the world about it because <laughs> I think you do. I that can't go back. So helpful. Though. I've tried to sleep on regular beds now. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, I think everyone <laughs> should be sleeping on a bed with a hole for your butt. It's genius though. It's really genius. I love I love hearing it's these so things soft. because oh, well, cuz not only does it help you, but it helps all the patients after you yeah. to go, "Oh, okay, that's a good idea. I think that would be worth it." Versus you know, the so- zero gravity chair. I yeah, the, see, the zero gravity chair thing it was cutting circulation at my hips cuz I was so wide. Oh. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> so yeah. The, no, it's been a, a lot of fun. Honestly, I've just been having a good it. time. So Well, and I love that you're sharing it. And I appreciate you coming on the podcast today yeah. and sharing the experience and sort of, it's so fun to talk to somebody who, you know, has gone through it, lived through it, you know, who can share the wisdom of kind of what to do, mm-hmm. what's going to put you in the best position, what not to do. Yeah. Um, and because really it's all just about sharing that knowledge because mm-hmm. people, some people just don't know. And I think our podcast has been a great way to help get information like this yeah. out to patients. So they they okay, here's somebody who- Firsthand, you know, I, firsthand knowledge yeah, is the, exactly. best, the best information you can get. Because the doctor hasn't, if the doctor hasn't had the surgery himself or herself, it's hard for them to explain what's going to happen to you, you know? Yeah. And so hearing it from from someone who's been through it, I wish I would have maybe f- come across your podcast prior to surgery because that probably would have helped me a lot too, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's been a lot of fun. I, I and, and I had a great experience with you all from the second I got that text message to the response. <laughs> um, you were able to get me in right away. I, I mean, my surgery from the moment that I booked to the mo- the day of surgery was uh, two weeks in a day, and I had to do my post op oh, wow. only ten days before, which they like to oh, the, oh the pre op yeah yeah and they like it to be two weeks before you know but they they made it work for me and for my schedule and um, the the post op re- like has been great I I had like one small little question on Sunday. Um, and Dr. Brahmi called me right away and on a, on a holiday, it was Memorial Day weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was having some discomfort from anesthesia, just you you can't go to the bathroom. And I was like, is this normal? Oh, oh, yes. You know, I'm yeah. freaking out, you know. It's the, yeah, the yeah. pain meds. And, yeah. And yeah. he called me right away and walked me through it and told me what to buy. And so, and then my post-op, he was like, <laughs> he was so happy. Like, you could tell he was like, it going like, damn, I'm good. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do such a good job at something you're like, well, yeah. It's like if you're doing someone's hair and it makes a transformation. Yeah. You're like, that, you still surprise yourself. Feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Dr. Brahmi. And yeah. yeah. Well, thank you again for coming on, Kaylee, My and sharing. And, and your, let's give everybody your handles again. Yes. The Skinny BBL on TikTok and on Instagram. And I do think I'm starting a YouTube for that as well. Oh, fun. And then okay. if you want a keratin treatment. <laughs> I know. SD, I, I can like walk right? over there. A- SD yeah. keratin on TikTok SD and Instagram keratin. as well. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And okay. if you just want to follow my life, Kaylee Babajan too, because I do post a lot of hair and body stuff and just how I'm really living, like what my daily life looks like um, post-op and 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 all of 
and all of that good stuff. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll put all that in the show notes for everybody. Awesome. And so for, for everyone listening, check the show notes for links. And, you know, if you were thinking about a consultation, there's no charge for consultation to ask, you know, any questions you want, we can do it for you. And, you know, for, if you're out of town, if you're not in the San Diego area, we do um, have a lot of patients who come from out of town to see our doctors and have a little rejuvenation vacation. So, you know, they can do a Zoom consult if it's something that you're not nearby, but if you're nearby, great. And, you know, we have a lot of before and afters, so check the show notes. And I love that you're sharing your transformation and we'll be able to see as you go along. And um, so thank you again for telling your story. And if anybody has any questions to me, I love, I love talking about this kind of stuff. Like I'm an open book and I will answer honestly. And um, so feel free to reach out to me as well. That's nice. That's nice. It's always good to have like a little buddy right? to be able to, you know, a just friend. bounce something off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you, and Thanks everybody for listening and we'll see you again next time. Take a screenshot of this podcast episode with your phone and show it at your consultation or appointment or mention the promo code podcast to receive $25 off any service or product of $50 or more at La Jolla Cosmetic. La Jolla Cosmetic is located just off the I-5 San Diego Freeway in the Zymed building on the Scripps Memorial Hospital campus. To learn more, go to ljcsc.com or follow the team on Instagram at ljcsc. The La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.